Grace and peace to you. It's Friday, March 26. This is a, the season of Lent, a time of ashes. Ashes to remind us to lament, to confess, and to repent. Therefore, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, we press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins, and I am the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque. This is a circle of prayer composed of close friends from Second Presbyterian, but also friends in Christ whose names we sometimes do not know. Together, at various times throughout the day, we pause to soak in scripture, to give thanks for the life that we have, and to lift up petitions from among our community. We thank you for joining us, for your prayers enrich our service. If you want to know more about this practice, read the weekly welcome that is posted under Daily Devotions on Second's webpage. But all you really need to know is this. Everyone needs a little mercy now. And so we begin today with a prayer based on Psalm 106, the first 27 verses. Perhaps you'll read that sometime during the day. The refrain is, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you show your people. Let us pray. God of all creation, we join our voices with those who praise you for the gift of life, the blessings of contentment, and the grace of courage. Help us to live in your favor, sharing justice and mercy in our homes, community, church, and world. We pray in the beloved name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that you show your people. Well, today we have the perfect story for the Friday before Holy Week. On Sunday, we will celebrate Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. Cheers and joy accompany him, but his followers are sure that though they've found the Messiah, there's something else happening. Jesus knows his path to Jerusalem will conclude in his death, and he yearns for his disciples to fully realize this. Today's lesson is an indication of Jesus' death. It comes from John chapter 12, the first 10 verses, a familiar story. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, to the home of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Lazarus and his sisters hosted a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who joined him at the table. Then Mary took an extraordinary amount, almost three quarters of a pound, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. And she anointed Jesus' feet with it, and then wiped his feet dry with her hair. The house was filled with the aroma of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, complained, This perfume was worth a year's wages. Why wasn't it sold and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he carried the money bag and would take whatever was in it. Then Jesus said, leave her alone. This perfume was to be used in preparation for my burial, and this is now how she has used it. You will always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me. Now many Jews learned that he was there, and they came not only because of Jesus, but 
to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. The chief priests decided that they were going to kill Lazarus too. It was because of Lazarus that many of the Jews had deserted them and had come to believe in Jesus. The next day is the text for Palm Sunday. Now there's a story about Jesus being anointed by a woman in all four Gospels. And each time it shows up, it has a unique setting and a unique purpose. John's Gospel is the only one that places the story exactly a week before Jesus' crucifixion. So let's linger over the elements slowly and carefully. First, the setting. It's the home of Lazarus, who only recently was called out of the tomb by Jesus. It's a home that knows both mourning and contentment. Then Martha, who served the meal, well, that was her gift, and Mary, the contemplative one, she brought out the nard, a perfume imported from India, used by the most wealthy as a burial balm. Soon the fragrance saturated the room. Everyone breathed it in, and then everyone's clothes carried the scent of death. This scene, this scent, scrambled the disciples' nerves. Judas objected, this is waste, this is outrageous waste. But everyone knew it wasn't the monetary waste that caused his outburst. It was the waste of Jesus. The possibility that Jesus would fulfill his own words about his death was too difficult for the disciples to face. Mary, pouring the expensive nard, and Jesus commending her for, for burial anointing was more than they could tolerate. But Jesus understood. And perhaps Mary, Martha, and Lazarus understood. And in a little while, the disciples would understand. And then that community would grow and then as to one untimely born, Paul would understand. And then the faithful one who wrote down the words for the Gospel of John would understand. That scent, that scent <clears throat> would eventually encircle every race and ethnicity and clan and condition. And then you and I on the Friday before he entered Jerusalem, death clung to Jesus as an aroma that couldn't be shrugged off. And by that scent, some came to know eternal life. But now it's time to say our prayers. We begin with the prayers for Friday. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially, we thank you for ministries of teaching and pastoral care, for those who work to help and to heal, for sacrifices others have made for our benefit for opportunities for our generous giving and for the presence of Christ in our weakness and sufferings. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially today, we pray for the church in Latin America, for a right relationship between humans and the earth. We pray for those who are wounded and face death, those who keep watch over the sick and the dying, 
and for all manifestations of reverence for the gift of life that you offer. Wise God, we come to you dizzy from the concerns of our hearts, the sorrows and challenges of those dear to us, and the many reports from our troubled world. We can neither understand nor fathom all that surrounds, but we rest this in you, knowing that in your will all things work together for good. Receive these petitions from our community and help us to trust that you are indeed working. We pray for those who are ill, undergoing treatments, awaiting decisions, recovering and learning to live within limitations, naming Francis, Ruth M, Richard M, Bev C, Sandra, Toby. We pray for friends and family experiencing health crises, little Ella, the three-year-old relative of Susie adjusting to juvenile diabetes, Bev's friend, Carlos, whose cancer has returned. We pray for families that extend extra care caused by illness, be it physical or mental. John, Carmen, and Gabe, Rick and Marie, Joyce and her adult children, and our elders, Victor, Mary, Lena, Salema, and Elsie, who turned 99 this week. We pray for those who are mourning, remembering that every day our nation reports 1,500 new COVID deaths, meaning every day sorrow increases. Bless those we do not know who are mourning, and also bless our community members who have been touched. Alma, whose cousin died in El Salvador from COVID, Chris Johnson following a friend's death, Anna and Luella mourning their aunt, Harriet, Sam, and Ella, each saddened by brothers' deaths. We pray for those whose lives are difficult, and especially we remember the concerns of our nation. All those reeling from the last two mass shootings, one in Georgia, another in Colorado. All Asian Americans, facing anew the reality of racism. All unaccompanied children at the border and the many who wait on the other side of the border. All in service at home and abroad, in military and in diplomacy. All lawmakers and those who enforce the law. And the millions who have lost, changed, or been reassigned or reimagined work this year. Speak your word of truth and courage into their lives that problems will be solved with justice and compassion and crises calmed by peace and prudence. We ask a special blessing this week on our pastor and his family who are enjoying a much needed vacation. Now let us pray for all in the medical field who tend to the ill, the disabled, the easy, the difficult, and those with little or great hope. Naming Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Tilda, Karina, Emiko, Pat's daughter Toby, together with her husband Boyd, and Pat's brother Arthur, who is Sandra's cousins, Melinda and Marshall, work directly with COVID patients. Bless them one and all. And now with the confidence born of the love of Christ, we pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve with one another with whatever gifts we have received. Let the people say, 
Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, the Lord's name be praised. And now as you prepare for Palm Sunday, pick up your palms from the church parking lot on Saturday, drop off some food for one of the, for the food bank. Know that in the midst of all that, you are discovering what it means that Christ came to minister, to die, and to be raised up that we might have life abundant and eternal. Remember the refrain from Psalm 106. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you show your people. And then now until we pray again, may these words spoken on Ash Wednesday continue to calm your hearts. From Joel 2, 13. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Go in peace.